questions throughout the class because I won't be coming up close or using hands-on, just let me know. I'm happy to come by and just listen to any feedback you have and how you can get even more settled. So I'll shut the door so it'll get a little bit more quiet in here. And then most importantly, in a restorative posture like this, we want to feel like we can let go into the props. So aligning your body where you feel like you can really let go into the supports. So maybe making some little scooches and adjustments. The chest and belly supported. Restorative yoga can give us much feedback into what's really going on in the body and the mind in this moment. So taking the opportunity to land. This is an excellent grounding pose to connect to our earth element. With a lot of buzzing space and static happening in our lives, not only in this moment, but just in our busyness of living, it's a really nice opportunity to just land and come back home to the body and into the breath, knowing that for the next hour, there's nowhere else that you need to be. No to-do list, no demands, no phone, no emails, no internet. Just coming back to source. So as the body is getting more comfortable in the room, Feel your bones getting heavier and heavier. Bones heavy toward the earth, toward the props. Noting the muscles surrounding the bones and note and scan where you may be holding tension and where on your next exhalation can you soften the muscles surrounding the bones? Feel your inhale filling up the body, filling the lungs. And feel the exhale softening the hard edges of body and mind. Just scanning and note how the breath is feeling right now without any judgment. Welcoming the inhale and the exhale. Mm -hmm. Feel free to take some deeper breaths in and up just to clear some space. Audible exhale. Ha. Feeling a deeper sense of letting go into your supports. Take a few more like that at your own pace. Deep breath in and out. You can slowly lift your head and rotate the head and neck to the opposite direction, resting the opposite cheek. So lifting and turning like you're moving through water, feeling that gentle rotation and a shift in sensation present. Note now the fingers and toes and if you're gripping here, where can the fingers and toes get even softer? Feel the center of the palms releasing, the soles of the feet softening. the effortless breath rising and falling. And for the next few minutes here, we'll just be here for a few more minutes in this pose, letting it be an opportunity to land here and now. We can begin now to gently deepen the next inhale, lengthen the next exhale smooth, and controlled. So as if you're using a straw, sip your inhale bottom to top, feel the back body expand. The skin stretches and becomes taut across the back. And on your exhale, there's a softening and a gentle condensing inward. 
Stay close to the sensation of the breath filling and expanding within you. Back body lifting, and on exhale, a melting of hard edges. Let your breath literally soothe you. Take the time to feel your full length of inhale from beginning to end and your full length of exhale from beginning to end. We'll know we're at the end of the inhale because we'll note a slight pause of silence and space at the top of the in-breath. And we'll also notice this same silent pause at the very end of our exhale. Note these pauses now as you begin to lengthen and deepen your breath. One more minute. Note your conscious control in your breathing right now and how you're smoothing out the bumps. The breath and the mind are directly linked and related. So when we smooth out the breath consciously, we are inviting a cease and fluctuation of mind. They go together, breath and mind. So when we take the time to consciously breathe like this in, up, Noting the pause at the top and out and down, noting the little pause at the end of the exhale. We're ceasing the fluctuation of mind. We're giving ourselves a moment, a gap between the running mind and right now. Let's take two more full, complete breaths. <sighs> Maybe if that's enjoyable to you, adding a sighing sound on your exhale and hear the sound all the way out. Nice, and then we'll slowly lift, or rather slide the hands in line with your shoulders. Once they get there, push the earth away, tuck your chin lightly to the chest and stack the vertebral column, coming up to a kneeling position. Now if you can't quite sit like this, just sit up and tuck the toes under a moment. So you can be here, or here. Roll the shoulders gently back and down and note a feeling of settling into the hips, the spine spacious. Gently bowing the head. We'll join the palms together in front of the heart. Just taking another moment of pause and peace, feeling connection within and all around as a little goes a very long way. So maybe you know, already noting a shift in sensations present in your energy by noting qualities and sensations currently taking place now in your breath and in your body. And may our efforts here together this evening be of benefit to all beings everywhere. Take a deep breath in and out. <sighs> we'll gently flutter the eyes open. There's not much that we need to do to change right now with the props. Just lift your bolster, take your one block up towards the front end of your mat and then the other block up towards the front end of your mat. We're gonna take our bolster and lay it now across the center of our mat. So we have equal distance behind the bolster and in front of the bolster. So we don't want the bolster way up top or way back behind, right in the middle of our mat. So just checking in the distance in front and behind. Yep. And then we'll make our way into a tabletop position. Shoulders over wrists, hips over knees. Navel right over the bolster, pretty much. And then from here, we'll just keep the toes untucked, bow the head to the chest slightly, too much. You just push the earth away and note a nice curving to your spine, kind of like we just had in that last pose. Inhale, shift your weight forward. The thighs will kind of rub up against the bolster there. And exhale, shift back until the forearms touch the bolster or the elbows. Inhale, rocking forward, gaze down. Exhale, rocking back. Now continue to keep pushing the earth away with your hands and feel that stability in your shoulders and upper back. 
And also with the breath leading the way, we're slowing down. Breath, moving body. Feel a nice release on the way back along the lumbar of the spine. And as you come forward, noticing spaciousness across the rim of the chest. You'll note that the movements want to get a little bit longer and wider as you're warming up. Maybe the forehead rests on the bolster, and then maybe the hips and thighs melt on the bolster for a moment, right? And just peeling, feeling, and becoming really curious about the whole line of your spine from the crown to the tail, from the tail to the crown. And eventually, when we come forward, we're going to hold here. Let the pubic bone, tops of thighs, and maybe a little bit of your lower waist rest on the bolster. Instead of hanging out like this, push the floor away and roll the shoulders back and down. Little bend to elbows. And instead of the knees on the mat, push into the tops of the feet and lift the knees and some of the thighs up. So we have an assisted up dog here, feeling a brightening of your energy and let your pelvis drop towards the prop. Curl the pubic bone gently up towards the navel and move the skull into the back plane. Take a breath in and up, really feel the strength in your hands and arms. And on your exhale, we bow the head, we lower the knees. Then press the ground away, come into an assisted child's forehead on the bolster. Let go of the weight of the arms, sitting back, hips to heels. Take a few breaths here. And again, envision the spine line, crown to tail, breathing along that central axis. Maybe noting tight spots dissolving as you breathe into them. Bring weight into your hands, lift your gaze slightly forward. We're going to slowly come forward back to where we were before in that assisted up dog. So press into the pubic bone, lift the thighs as you press into the tops of the feet, roll the shoulders back. We want to avoid shrugging here. So it's pretty active, but with support. Curling pubis up, pull the breath and guide it into the chest and throat. On your exhale, bow the head, lower knees, then press back to that assisted child's. Bow the head, let go of all weight and effort. Take a few breaths here. Note how there's a lot more space in our lumbar. We can really feel the low and middle lungs really filling up. That's the most underutilized portion of our lungs, so we can really feel the tide of our breath here opening and expanding, calming us down as well as when we breathe downward, we come into a calm response. Using more of the diaphragm as we're breathing and inviting in that healing response. Inhale, lift the gaze, bring weight to hands. We're gonna come through this one more time. An assisted up dog, pressing into tops of legs, point the tail down, or tops of feet rather, lifting knees and thighs, roll shoulders back. Now again, try not to collapse and dip here. Lift the chin, move the skull back, and feel that brightening and stability. This is what your up dog should feel like in a sun class. So if it doesn't, you can take this into a sun class and kind of remember, right? Exhale, bow the head, lower knees, bend elbows, press it back to that assisted child's and hold. Ah, maybe an open mouth breath. Now you can stay here, and if you'd like, connect your palms together in prayer position, elbows on the bolster, and bring the thumbs to the base of the neck or at C7. That's where the cervical vertebra meets the thoracic, that biggest bump at the back of the neck where it meets the shoulder area. And then if you want an even deeper stretch here in the triceps, walk your elbows a little bit further forward and let the heart open as the armpits sink towards the mat. Let go of the weight of the head, breathing in, breathing out, being really curious about your breath and how it's supporting what's happening. Hmm. Next inhalation, lift the head and gaze. We're going to plant the palms, come back through to table. Now from here, tuck all 10 toes under. If you want more of a wrist release, turn your hands the opposite direction. So fingertips point towards you. Now that might not work for you, right? In your wrist, so you don't have to do it. Right? Always listen to yourself. You're the, you're the guru. Inhale, flip the tail, lift the gaze, throat soft. When you lift the gaze, if your forehead wrinkles, soften your eyes. Try to smooth the forehead. 
And exhale, press into the tops of your feet, round and hollow. Good, inhale, arching. Gaze lifts. Exhale, rolling into that. Cat, inhale, cow, move at your own pace. Remember, our little girls are very long ways, so when we slow down, we can really access a lot of depth in these gentle practices. Mm. And then slowly we come back to center, turning the hands the opposite direction. From here, little bend to your elbows, wrap the armpits towards the heart. So think of the armpits like they're going to look at each other. And instead of hanging out, Push the earth away, feel the stability in your upper back, skull in line with shoulders, tuck toes, press back, Adho Mukha, downward dog. We're just going to be here briefly, so you can pedal the feet, rock the head and the neck, say yes, say no, feel that nice stretch along the spine line, and any other organic movement that's calling to you. So maybe you want to lift one leg high and open and stack the hip for a moment, rolling the ankle and wiggling the toes. Maybe even bending that right knee and dropping the heel towards the glute. Hmm. And then you can switch to the other side if you chose to do that. Inhaling the left leg high, opening and stacking. Feel a little bit of a brightening of your energy after those compressed postures. Maybe bending the knee, dropping the heel towards the glute. And then you can slowly return back to your dog. Inhale the right leg high, and on your exhale, we're going to bend the right knee into the chest, come forward into a plank, and one or many steps to bring that foot over the bolster. You can always use your hand to bring the, bring the foot forward. From here, we're going to lower the back knee behind the bolster. Now, this is where you may want your blocks, and then an assisted lunge. So from here, the blocks can be at any height. There's three different heights, okay? And then, as long as we're not collapsing, we want to feel freedom in the body with ease in our joints. So from here, breathing the heart forward, gently curl the pubic bone up towards the navel and give the inner thighs a little hug towards the middle, towards the midline. Now if you'd like, reach the arms around and up and you can take opposite elbows. Reaching the elbows up, draw the belly back, skull in line with the shoulder blades, feeling the integrity of the whole. Three more breaths. Long. Think of the spine growing long and tall. 
On your exhale, fold at the hinge of the hip and bow the head. We're going to have a slightly longer hold here. Breathing with intention, filling the back line of the right leg, smooth and steady. Note the inhale, washing up the back body and the exhale, softening the heart. And really feeling that the breath is really the gatekeeper into the depths of these postures, which really is the depths of the body and mind, right? Letting the exhale happen all the way. Note if you're stifling the breath and just continue to keep turning your awareness back to it. It's okay if your mind drifts away. It's supposed to. The mind wants to think and wants to move around. That's how it's designed, think, thankfully, right? But in this moment, when we drift away from now, come back and begin again with the next inhalation. We can always begin again. One more breath. Next inhalation, lift the head and the gaze, breathe the heart forward, come up back to where you were, you'll feel a nice spaciousness here, most likely. Scrub the heel back an inch or two, and then come back through that lunge. One more time, inhale, sweep the arms around and up. And exhale, when you're ready, plant the palms, however you'd like to get back to downward dog. So you can tuck the back toes under, there is that hump there, so be careful when you step that right foot back, pedal the feet. And note a considerable difference between right and left, most likely. Good. And then we'll step, or rather lift the left leg high, smooth glide forward, two halves to make a hole, so bring that left foot forward between the hands and lower the back knee to the mat. Right. And then from here, maybe using the blocks, it's up to you. If you did on the last side, you might want to on this side. And then lunging forward, of course, but also feeling the control in the pelvis. So curling the front of the pubic bone up towards the navel. Inner thighs hug gently towards the middle. And with this refinement, we can really feel that spaciousness in our energy. Instead of collapsing up top, we have more room to breathe. Inviting the breath in. The asana are forms that we're fortunate enough to breathe into invoke certain responses, you may want to reach the arms high and take opposite elbows, reaching the elbows up. As you do that, try not to collapse on the ribs, so draw the belly in, lift the chin slightly, skull moving back, and feel all that freedom, breathing into that spaciousness. Good, one more here, we breathe in, exhale, we release, you can place the blocks to the side if you'd like, or use them. We're gonna take the right hand slightly forward of the shoulder, take your left foot a little wider to the left, and bring your left hand up to that inside line of the knee or thigh, and then press into both hands to spiral the heart open. Move slow so we don't just whip the body through, right? Guide, guide your body. And then you may wanna turn onto the blade side edge of the foot, Turning the inner sole up, if that's helpful. Yeah, and then maybe the left arm reaches up, feeling more space there. Just try not to dump the weight into that right shoulder. Roll the shoulder back. Nice, everybody. Three breaths. The breath and agent of dissolution. The breath and anchor right into this moment. And our conscious awareness pointed towards it. Inhale, balancing the strength of the inhale with that of the exhale as you slowly lower the left hand, coming back to square. Fingertips under the shoulders, take a breath in, and on your exhale, shift it back, lengthening that lead leg. And then you may want your blocks again here. Maybe the calf is resting against the front of the bolster. Before we come into this and hold it, wag the tail a little bit and feel. Feel where it feel, begins to feel even. Inner thighs gently hug, micro bend the lead knee if you need to. If there's pressure in the kneecap or a strain in the buttock or behind the knee, you want to be right in the belly of the muscle of the hamstring set. Breathe the heart forward when you find it. Sternum leads the way. Exhale, bowing into that space, slightly longer hold here. Smooth breath in and out. 
the inhale, come in, receive. From the exhale, come out, let it go. Smooth and steady breath. Cleansing and clearing. Keep that grounded. And instead of the shoulders splaying out, square it in the center. 
level the sternum forward with the gaze. Now we'll draw that heel close into the glute, reach the right arm forward and bow the head. To deepen this stretch, we want to push the kneecap toward the floor and keep the pubic bone anchored and pushing down. Then inhale, peel the front body up, release the hold of the foot. Let's bring left forearm back down, right forearm back down. Forearms parallel, pressing pubis into the mat, right? Broaden the collarbones, and then we bend the right knee. Flex the ankle for a moment. Feel if you're rocking and keep that steady in the center. And then the left arm comes forward and straight shoulder on the upper back. Really push that palm down and forward to level. Then the hand comes back to take the foot. Kick the foot into the hand for a moment to level and square. You might need to walk that left hand in a bit. And then we can guide that heel towards the glute as we peel down and forward. And again, strong back leg. Just pressing the right knee down towards the mat. Press the pubis and hip bones into the bolster. And then we can slowly release the hold. Bring right hand down, left hand down. Heel the body up. Coming up to table. You're gonna feel a nice deep release in and around the rib cage, most likely, and in the belly. From here, three cat cow. Round on exhale. Inhale, arch. <laughs> exhale, round. You might notice a little bit more room after that compression. Mm -hmm. Inhale, arch. Good. And then we'll slowly tuck the toes, lift the hips, downward dog again. Let the head hang heavy. Pedal the feet. Hmm. Now from here, walk your feet closer towards the bolster about six inches till the soles of your feet touch the ground. So your hands and soles of feet are permanently, or not permanently, but grounding into the earth, right, without the heels lifting, wherever is comfortable for you. So you may need to bend the knees here a little bit to find comfort in that, and that's okay. From here, keep your feet and hands planted. We inhale, shift the weight forward, keep your heels grounded. And then exhale, shift your weight back, lift the hips up and back. That should feel pretty nice and even, maybe. Inhale, come forward. I always say maybe because, you know, I'm not you. So just checking in. Exhale, shifting back. Plug into heels, lift sit bones up. Good. Inhale, forward. Exhale, back. This time, bend, bend, bend the knees till your belly melts onto your thighs. Bring your hands up to the bolster. Then back towards your toes in a Uttanasana forward fold. Halfway inhale, flat back. Breathe the heart forward. Lengthen the, tail, lengthen the tail long. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees, belly to thigh. Let the head drop heavy. Inhale, halfway lift hands to shins or the bolster. It's right in front of you. Feel free to use it. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway again. Exhale, let's fold here and hold. You might want to take opposite elbows or wrap the arms behind the uh, calves. And rocking your feet ever so slightly. Rocking weight a little bit more into the ball mounds and out of the heels, and then back into the heels out of the ball mounds. Maybe an open mouth breath here. Ha. Good. And then we'll slowly unwind. Inhale, halfway. A little bend to knees. Now slide the hands up to your hips, right? Squeeze the elbows in. Bring the heels of the palms into the low back like this. Try to parallel the spine. So if your head's way higher than your hips, lower the chest, lift the hips, right? So try to play with that a bit till you feel quite parallel. And then draw the elbows in. Press the heels of the palms in and down and rise to standing. Now at the top, Legs are straight and engaged, kneecaps lift, curl the pubic bone up towards the navel, hold to your exhale and surrender your heart. Use the hands for support firmly and the legs as you inhale, rise to standing, sweep the arms around and up. Exhale, hands through to your heart. 
Tadasana, palms face forward. Inhale, sweep the arms around and up. Exhale, hands through the heart center, Samasthiti. One more time, inhale, around and up, gathering breath. Exhale to the heart. We're going to open the arms to a T position. I'm sorry, cactus. Now it's easy to dump the ribs forward, so again, draw them in, down, feel that integrity in your low back. Then bring left hand to left hip. So without rocking the hips for the next series, we're just going to stand nice and tall, shoulders on the upper back, shoulder blades down on the upper back, skull moving into back plane. Take an inhale, reach the arms up, or right arm up and over. Just moving from the navel upward. Exhale back to vertical and bring the arm back down to that 90 degree position. The inhale starts, then reach the right arm up, over, exhale. Steady gaze, so smooth like you're moving through water. Inhale, exhale. Let's do three more on this side. You can use your left hand for support there so the hips don't rock around. And imagine someone hugging the opposite hip as well, keeping you nice and stable. Inhale, growing out and over. Exhale, shifting. Last one, inhale. Feel yourself kind of catching up and integrating. Now from here, we'll hold. Bring the back of your right hand to the sacrum. Roll, palm facing away, and then roll the shoulder back and down. Tuck the chin to the chest and roll the left ear to the left shoulder. Now all we need here is a little pressure of hand to back, back to hand, like they're Velcroed. Maybe turn the right cheek up towards the sky a bit, adding a slight rotation. Collarbones spacious, shoulders softening away from ears. And then tuck the chin to center, roll the right ear to the right shoulder. Keep the ribs and belly gently drawing in and down. Maybe turn the left cheek up towards the sky a bit, add a slight rotation here. About one to two pounds of pressure where the hands are meeting the body. And then tuck the chin to center, lift the head and gaze back to the center here at neutral, and unwind, bring the right arm by your side, and mountain then the left. Inhale, sweep around and up. Interlace your fingers. Flip the palms to the sky. Deep breath in. Exhale. <sighs> right hand now comes to right hip, left arm to cactus, right? Shoulder blade back on the upper back. We want to feel the scapular, scapula or shoulder blade glide on the upper back, right? As the body's nice and still and static. Remember, we inhale, we grow long and reach over to the right. The opposite hand is pressing in on that outer hip to stay stable in the center. Exhale, stack the vertebral column, come back to that 90. Inhale when you're ready. Exhale, feel all that light through the side waist, side body. Inhale. Go at your own pace. So even though I'm saying inhale and exhale, yours might be longer or shorter. Try to lengthen it have to be like synchronized swimming so go at your own your own breath your own pace and enjoy that gliding if you're moving through water two more when we warm up the shoulders like this it lends an opportunity to really get into some deeper places in our neck so we'll hold here then bring the back of the left hand to the sacrum that's the flat bony part of the low back the sacral plate and then, again, equal pressure of the hand to back, back to hand, to feel that hug and stability in the shoulder joint in other places. And then tuck the chin to the chest. Roll the left ear to the left shoulder. Again, breathe. Feel the breath opening spaces. Maybe turn the right cheek up towards the sky. Noticing a little shift somewhere. In the center, roll just the head and neck. Everything else is still. So the opposite side, right ear to right shoulder. Shoulders back and down. Maybe turn the left cheek up towards the sky. Mm. And then tuck the chin back to center. Lift the head back to neutral. Gaze forward. And releasing the arm, left arm, right arm. Tadasana. Inhale, reach.
arms around it up. Interlace, exhale. It's going to rebound a little too hot. Think that rounded in the elbows. Then flip the palms to the sky. Deep breath in. Press into feet as you reach up in opposite directions. Hold here, exhale. Feeling that integrity in the middle. Inhale, reach a little higher. And on your exhale, this time we fold out over the hinge of the hips. Bend the knees when you need to. Coming into that forward fold. Beautiful. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. <sighs> Inhale, rise all the way to standing. Sweep the arms around and up. Exhale to the heart. Inhale, sweep around and up. Feel the integration of body and breath. Fluid movement. Exhale, keep the lateral body long as you fold over the hips. Bend the knees when you need to. Head heavy. Inhale, halfway when you're ready. Hold, exhale. Nice breathing. Breath leading body. Last one here. Inhale, up. All the way. Ward Bahasasana. Exhale, hands to heart center. So I'll deep. And we'll come back into that forward fold again. Inhale. Gathering all that goodness, drawing you in close as you fold forward over the hinge of the hips. This time, halfway inhale, bend the knees, bring the hands to the bolster, then walk them forward to the front and bring the knees back. Now we're back in our table, yeah? So holding here a moment. Three cat cow, inhale, arch. Exhale, round. Inhale, arch. Exhale round. Last time. Good. Come back to a neutral spine. We're going to bring the hands to the bolster. Bring the hands up to the knees now. Pause here a moment and address them. Come inward with the eyes closed. This is a really nice thing to do. Just by simply closing the eyes, we can taste a little bit deeper the internal experience, our internal landscape. Taking a moment to come in, come inward. And we'll bow the head, fluttering the eyes open. You can watch for a moment before you do this. You're just going to simply turn. Your head's going to be towards me now, feet away. And before you come in, you won't be able to see me for the remainder of class, feet are hip width or a little wider, hands are at the bolster. You can lean back onto the forearms first, then slowly guide yourself open. We're just going to be here briefly in this deep, pretty deep back bend, arms to cactus. Knees can turn in like this. And so we can just start here. So when you're ready, Coming into this position, bolster still where it was before. We didn't have to move that. Let go of the shoulders and armpits. Now, if this is too much, clasp and interlace your hands. Place them behind the skull, kind of like you're laying at the beach. And note that you have a lot more height there in the head and neck. And notice the spaciousness in the front body. The spaciousness of the solar plexus, the ribs, and again, let your body melt back towards the bolsters, towards the earth. When we feel supported, we can let go. Buttocks are on the floor with the hips. There's the bolster at the curve of the low back to mid back, and the shoulder blades and upper back are on the floor. Feeling a nice arc to the lumbar. Just a few more breaths here. Noticing a brightening of your energy as you're in a posture like this. And let the exhale settle you down into the earth, feeling supported. Together here, let's take a smooth breath in and up. Fill your belly, fill your chest. And then let it go. <sighs> feeling a deeper sense of releasing back. That was so good. Let's do two more. Inhale, belly fills, chest fills. Ah. Bones heavy, muscles releasing. One more time. Ah. 
walk your feet now to the outer edges of your mat. Your knees are still bent. Soles of the feet are down on the ground, toes pointing forward and parallel. Very gently sway your knees like seagrass, side to side. Feeling a nice compression to the back body organs, the kidneys, adrenal glands. The upper body remains nice and still. If anything, maybe the head rolls in the opposite direction that the knees sway. But slow this down. Inhale, center, exhale, over. Hmm. Rocking is a really soothing action, right? So when we rock, we can really let go. Come back to the middle. Toe heel, the feet in hip width distance apart. We're going to lift the hips, bring the hands to the bolster, and scooch your way back. So now your lowest part of your back is on the bolster for supported bridge. So we just scooch back. There should be no pressure in your neck if there is. You want to scooch the shoulder blades slightly more together. You should be feeling held in the shoulder blades and shoulders on the floor as well as the head. And the low back and hips are slightly raised with the bolster right under them. Now you can stay here or lift one leg then the opposite leg high. Coming into an longana inversion here, cooling and calming. The arms can be any way that feels best. So maybe arms open like they are, or by your side, or maybe the hands are folded at the belly, just to observe and stay close to your breath. Your most loyal friend, always here. Watching its pace, the ebb and flow. Now with the head heavy to the mat, lift the chin slightly away from your chest, and let the skull drop into the earth. With that, the eyes rest in their sockets. Watching the belly gently lift and lower as the breath moves in and out. Navel rising and falling. Anytime you can lower the feet back to the mat. We'll be here for about another minute with the legs raised. But if you need to at all, just simply lower the feet back to where they were. Totally fine. Cooling and calming, noticing a cooling sensation. Reversing the effects of your standing day so far. Feel your cheeks releasing. Gently separating the rows of teeth. Softening the root of the tongue. Feel the sides of the tongue widening. You can open the feet slightly, roll the ankles, and wiggle the toes if you wish. Point and flex. And we'll gently take our time to lower our feet back to where they just were. Give both knees a hug into the chest, flattening the tail long. And then lengthen your left leg out long. Keep the right knee hugging in close. And give the inner thighs a little hug towards the middle to level the seat and low back. Flexing the ankles gently. And again, just feel if you're gripping in the upper half. Soften the shoulders. Soften the collarbones and chest. And then bring the left knee back in to match the right knee and then switch, resetting the spine before switching. The inhale, receiving, the exhale, softening edges. And then bring right knee in to match left knee. Take the hands to the kneecaps and gently circle the hips separately, mirroring the movement here in your hip joints. Knees widen, then come close together. Widen, then come close together, circling, and then reversing the direction. Feeling a nice release in and around the hips. This is an opportunity to take any final movements or postures that might be calling to you. and then arriving in Shavasana. So when you do that, plant the feet to the earth. There's no rush. 
and scooch your body back a little bit more so that the bolster is now underneath the backs of the knees as you lie in Shavasana. So the bolster is under the knees, the legs are long, the armpits are open, palms are up when you eventually choose to arrive, listening to what's needed to find the most balance and ease. Knowing that when we do arrive here, there's nothing else left to do. We can absorb and receive the benefits of our practice lying in stillness. The whole body rests. Giving yourself permission to release the full weight of your arms and hands. Give yourself permission to release the full weight of your shoulders, neck, and chest. Allowing and giving yourself permission to release the full weight of your head, neck, and face. Giving yourself permission to release the full weight and grip in and around the belly low back and hips, groin. And giving yourself permission to release fully the weight of the legs and feet. The whole body rests. Held by the earth held by the natural and spontaneous free tide of breath and ultimately held by the present. Remaining still, begin to feel into the points where your body meets the floor, from the head down to the heels. Notice the subtle place of meeting between your body and the floor. Noticing this space between the body and the floor. Feeling the outline of your body and the space occupied by the body.
Feel together now the body and space together. Gradually and slowly begin to bring your awareness to the natural tide of your breath. Moving through the container of the body. Noting the sensations present, the shifts that may have already taken place from when you entered the room to now. Gradually begin to welcome and assist the next inhale to elongate and the exhale to elongate. Deepening slowly the rise and fall of your breath. And moving slowly as there is no rush, begin to move your fingers and toes, reawakening into the physical body, rocking the head and the neck, taking your time. And eventually, little movements become larger movements. Then we hug the knees into the chest. Again, no rush. Too often, we, we move too quick, and we lose the spaciousness we've cultivated. So see if you can maintain it. And when you notice yourself rushing, where can you slow it down and relish in all of the little movements and sensations as you do? And eventually, roll to fetal posture on one side, giving yourself a moment here. giving yourself, when you land here, a moment of pause and peace, and taking in not only the shape of the body, but the sensation the body is in when you are in fetal posture, bringing you back to your original essence of creation in the womb, and that safe feeling against the earth and in this curled up position. Now, as though you're moving through water, we're going to, in a moment, peel up to a comfortable seat facing forward towards me. So you have your bolster there. You can sit right up on it for a little elevated seat. Take your time. The eyes remain closed if they can till the very end of class. Holding on again to this internal experience, the internal landscape. Just as all states of matter shift, note your energy shifting and settling once again. Weight heavy in your seat, the spine spacious and tall, aligning the central axis, the heart center over the root center the third eye over the heart, over the root. Taking another moment here of stillness. Watching the pulse of the natural tide of your breath within the body. And as we watch the natural breath without becoming involved in it, we can be with this moment just as it is, as we are with the breath just as it is. And join the palms together in front of the heart. On Jolly Mudra. Bowing the head, honoring your wholeness. And thank you and thank yourself for practicing this evening. Namaste Om, Shanti, 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 peace. Namaste. Thank you all so much.